Welcome back, future millionaires. Today, we're gonna to talk about a really important question, especially now that the economy has been doing so badly because of the pandemic. Should you go back to school? I'm gonna give you a really cool process for evaluating financial decisions. And you're gonna be able to use it if you wanna go back to school to become a plumber, a computer programmer, a lawyer, or get something like your MBA. You're gonna be able to use this process no matter what type of career you're pursuing. So, for starters, I'm gonna throw two numbers at you. 35% and 10%. Only 35% of US adults have a bachelor's degree. So if you're one of those roughly one in three that have actually made it to the finish line and got your bachelor's degree, congratulations. It's not as common as you think it might be. I'm sure you can probably guess what this number is. This is the number of American adults that have a graduate degree. You know, medicine, law, uh, master's, PhD, etc. It's only 10%. So the number of people that actually make it to that next level and find the time and the investment to pursue a graduate degree is actually quite small. Now, if all of your friends have graduate degrees and you don't, it's really easy to feel like you're missing out and that you're the minority. But I thought before we get too far down the road, I just wanted to ground all of us in the actual on the ground statistics of what's going on. So you've, you've looked at the numbers and you realize that this is still really rarefied air and you're still interested in pursuing graduate work. Or again, you can use the same process for coding, plumbing, trade schools, whatever the case might be. I want you to always think of these decisions through the lens of opportunity cost. And so what does that mean, right? Opportunity cost for me, I always think about a genie in a lamp. This genie does not have a lamp because we rubbed the lamp off camera and the genie appeared and here that genie is, right? Now, I have three options on the board right here. This is a one-year grad program or maybe it's like a one year of, of coding boot camp or something like that, but it's taking one year off of your life, time, and tuition, right? And then this might be a two year full-time MBA, right? And here's three years, we'll just call this a JD, right? So in each one of these situations, you have to stop working full-time to pursue this degree. Obviously, there are instances where you can go part-time and opportunity cost is a little bit of a blunt tool and it's not quite as easy to just take it and, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that on another episode. But so imagine for this conversation that you have to take one, two, or three years off from working, right? And then you have to pay tuition, right? 60,000, 90,000, 120,000 for the cost of your education. Not only that, but if you're taking this time off, let's just say for the sake of argument, you're, you're earning $60,000 a year, right? You're missing out on another $60,000 in income here, 120 here, and 180 here. So all in all, these options cost you 120,000, 210,000, and 300,000, right? In order to use the power of the genie in the bottle, here's the way that I would frame it. Imagine that the genie came to you, I'm gonna start with the MBA, and the genie said to you, in one hand, I'm gonna give you two years of your life and a check for $210,000. And you can do anything you want with those two years. You can do anything you want with that $210,000. In the other hand, I have a piece of paper that says, Matthew Xavier Rowling, you are now an MBA from the University of Maryland. The genie comes to me and the genie has two alternatives, two years of my life and a pile of cash or the piece of paper that says MBA. Whenever I frame, whenever I use opportunity cost to frame that decision making, I almost always decide against two years off and the $90,000, right? Because when you're staring at that massive pile of cash as the opportunity cost of the education, it becomes really hard to justify it. 
Because if you're foregoing $210,000, right, to go get an MBA, let's say that on the back end of that, that your pay went from 60 grand a year to 80, and you got a $20,000 bump, it would take you over 10 years to recoup that cost, that lost money. So you're looking at a 10 year payback on that two year time investment of energy and tuition and money to get your MBA, right? Same thing with that law degree, right? Imagine that you would get an extra 30,000 and your starting salary out the gate as a lawyer would be $90,000. You still have, again, a 10 year break even or a 10 year payback on that law degree. So most of the time, when you frame the decision of should I go back to school through the lens of opportunity cost, you really have to be sure that on the back end of that education, that the long-term benefit of the increase in your salary or wages is going to overcome the time and the financial cost of that degree. Now, I say all that and I'll, and I'll backtrack a little bit and say this. If in your heart of hearts, you really, really, really wanna be a lawyer or you really, really, really wanna become an MBA or you really, really wanna get a master's degree in basket weaving from Gudger College, go for it. Don't stop yourself from pursuing your dreams, whatever they are, because one surefire way of making sure that you do become independently wealthy someday is if you do something that you love. Before you make that decision to go back to school, Look at it with your eyes wide open. For me, there's no substitute for using opportunity cost to make really wise decisions when it comes to these types of very, very large price tag items. Warren Buffett's business partner, Charlie Munger, has often said that smart people make decisions with opportunity costs. When I was a little kid, I always wanted a Porsche 911. And even today, now that I can afford one with, with confidence and comfort, I still ask myself the same question I always ask myself. If the genie appeared to me and he said, Matt, in one hand I have a Porsche 911 unencumbered and no liens with your name on it, or I have a pile of cash and $90,000 with your name on it, I still take, would take the money. Today, you learned an extremely powerful tool for decision making. Sometimes, who you are or where you're going to school will definitely drive the decision, and the opportunity cost dilemma might not be the final say on whether or not you go back to school. Have you been faced with the decision of whether or not to go back to school? Comment below and tell us about whether or not you used an analysis like this or how you came to the decision of whether or not to go back to school. Thanks a lot for being part of the Professor X learning community.